Gimanshi de la Briere, or Let them eat cake, is perhaps the most famous quote attributed to Marie Antoinette, the Queen of France during the French Revolution. As the story goes, it was the Queen's response upon being told that her starving peasant subjects had no bread, because cake is more expensive than bread. The anecdote has been cited as an example of the Queen's obliviousness to ordinary people's daily lives. Now, who would have guessed that this is what happened to Jerry T. Nelson, a foreign expat and lawyer living in Shanghai, a city under strict pandemic lockdown? Although failing to get any essential food delivered to him, Nelson instead received a cake, an ice cream cake to be precise, and posted a picture of it on Twitter. Well, Mr. Nelson as a foreign expat was actually quite lucky compared with the local Shanghai residents living in this apartment building, who are shouting to the street in this viral Twitter video, we are starving to death right now. So what's going on in Shanghai these days? Welcome to Tea with Our Ping. Spring has arrived, and the world is beginning to treat COVID-19 as endemic. Quite great, wouldn't you agree? But this is not the case in China today, as it's still treating the virus as a pandemic. Shanghai, China's financial center, has put all of its 26 million residents under lockdown as daily cases exceeded 10,000. Reuters reported 23 cities under total or partial lockdown, affecting an estimate of 193 million people in China. China's COVID measures are among the world's strictest and perhaps most notorious with its zero-COVID policy. The military-like lockdown in Shanghai has been extended until further notice. Despite the latest official test results showing only 268 daily COVID-19 cases, the actual number should be many times higher, according to local residents. The People's Liberation Army PLA, dispatched more than 2,000 medical personnel recruiting recruited from across the Army, Navy, and Joint Logistic Support Forces to Shanghai. At least 38,000 healthcare workers from 15 provinces have been sent to Shanghai. 50,000 public security personnel are on duty to enforce community lockdown. The gates at many residential compounds are locked, with food delivered to collection points. Panic shopping has emptied grocery stores. Government workers and volunteers wearing full protective equipment have been going door-to-door -door with microphones calling on residents to report for testing at designated sites. Drone with loudspeakers are flying over Shanghai telling residents not to protest the lockdown. According to London Times, the drone says, please comply with the COVID restrictions. Control your soul's thirst for freedom. Do not open your windows and sing. Streets are empty, public transport has been suspended, and the roads closed. The strategy has shown signs of strain among general public, with citizens sharing videos across social media expressing concern about the lockdown. People are complaining about the crowded and unsanitary quarantine centers, and difficulties in securing food supplies and essential medical help. Cyber police have quickly taken down these videos from the internet. The Secretary General of Shanghai's government, Ma Chunlei, acknowledged that officials were not sufficiently prepared for the dramatic increase in infected people. This is a rare admission of mistakes in China's economic and financial center. In Shanghai, anyone who tests positive for the virus, whether or not the symptoms are severe, must be isolated in the hospital or designated facility. Isolation facilities with no proper sanitation are bursting with infected people squashed in with one another. People with life-threatening conditions have posted calls for online help as they could not get to the hospital. China requires parents and young children to quarantine separately if either test positive for the virus. This policy is extremely controversial. Photos and videos that show the young children isolated from their families and crying at a Shanghai hospital led to an outburst of anger online. Shanghai residents organized an online petition calling for allowing asymptomatic children to isolate themselves at home. But the internet police has taken down this petition. According to an April 2nd report by Cai Xin, 
an outspoken media outlet in China, the Shanghai Donghai Elderly Care Hospital had an undisclosed COVID-19 outbreak, leaving the hospital underwhelmed and under-resourced. Over 100 seniors and medical staff tested positive, and some died afterwards. The article stayed online for only one hour before the Big Brothers took it down. A staff member told NPR in an interview that they were tricked into working at the hospital, that the employment agency said that they were looking for cleaners and would pay us extra. They told us we would not be working with COVID patients, just changing bed sheets for close contacts. None of the staff interviewed by the NPR are trained nurses, but due to the shortage of medical staff, they are being asked to treat bad sores and insert intravenous tubing. The hospital remains sealed off, and the elderly are not allowed to leave the infected facility. China has been attempting to paint an optimistic picture of the lockdown and released a video thanking health workers, promising that the situation will soon improve. Eric Figo Ding, a healthcare economist, shared the video in his Twitter, contrasting it with the actual situation, with footage of starving Shanghai residents fighting over groceries at supermarkets. Li Li Chen, a Shanghai resident, told Bloomberg, in this country, it's not a virus that scares us, but the chaotic anti-COVID measures that have caused risks to the well-being of the elderly, the children, and the companion animals, I now realize we can only rely on ourselves, not the government to protect our own families. The resistance by Shanghai residents could inspire other cities to resist lockdowns. In Jilin province in northeastern China, where the residents have been locked down for months, students wrote lengthy pleas online after campuses were closed off over infections, leaving students with a shortage of drinking water, disinfectants, and even sanitary pads. Some said their sick classmates were locked inside their rooms and denied access to bathrooms. A lot of people here are suffering from fever. Our teachers kept giving us antipyrectics, telling us to wrap ourselves in a blanket and sleep it away, and that they will give a different drug if it doesn't work, wrote a female student from Jilin Agriculture Technology College on Chinese social media. We are basically left to die, she said in a post that has generated 2.76 million likes. There are quite a few graphic online footages showing people committed suicide to end the misery of starvation or depression. The government has tried to censor the unrest by taking down videos posted on WeChat. Bloomberg reported two videos of a protest at an apartment compound in Shanghai's Minhang district, in which residents were chanting, We want to eat, we want the right to know, and we want freedom. WeChat also deleted an article written by policy critic Li Chengpeng highlighting lockdown horror stories. According to Li, it's common to see law enforcement officers dragging and beating someone in front of a crowd for violating pandemic rules. The People's Daily, the party's mouthpiece, defended President Xi Jinping's stringent virus strategy, saying that the zero-COVID policy is essential to saving lives and keeping the economy going, which must be adhered to without hesitation or wavering. The lockdown of 23 provinces accounts for some 70% of China's GDP, contributing to a plunge in the stock market and affecting global supply chains. Economists have lowered China's GDP forecasts, as the government's target of 5.5% is no longer realistic. The zero-COVID policy is no longer a public health decision, but a political one. The resistance and the rebellion in Shanghai and elsewhere show that the party state's so-called successful model of containing the virus outbreak is a lie. For most Chinese people, the government's inhumane and excessive anti-epidemic measures have caused more harm and contradictions to society. Huang Ya Zhong, a senior fellow for global health at New York-based Council on Foreign Relations, says policy change is not likely until after the 20th National Congress of the Communist Party later this year, at which Xi Jinping would secure a record third term as the party's leader. 
the social unrest feared by the party is slowly taking place. Local officials have also started to resist orders from higher authorities. Chinese observers report that on March 22nd, four major Chinese news platforms flip-flopped several times between the zero-COVID policy and the policy to protect the economy at a minimal cost. This flip-flop may indicate some intensive power struggles within the Communist Party. A conversation recording between the Shanghai citizen and the director at the Shanghai Pudong New Area Center for Disease Control and Prevention, Zhu Weiping, criticizing Shanghai's epidemic prevention measures went viral on the internet. Zhu believed that COVID patients with mild and symptomatic conditions should be quarantined at home. Yet her repeated pleas were not heard by city officials. She also said that information given by Chinese CDC was not credible, and the organization often reported negative results as positive to the public. In the recording, Zhu said, no one is listening to professionals. Now, this illness has become a political virus, with so many resources spent. Zhu further permitted this recording to be put out. As she bluntly said, now we all feel completely desperate. Chinese citizens are concerned that Zhu will be silenced, as was the case with Dr. Li Wenliang when he posted an early warning about the virus. The hashtag that translates to protect Zhu Weiping on Weibo, China's Twitter-like platform, has reached 2.8 million readerships. Beijing still promotes the version of truth they want the public to believe with any current issues that have put them under the world's watchful eyes. The government's response in dealing with the pandemic is critical for the succession of the party's rule. Reversal of the zero-COVID policy means undermining Xi Jinping's political authority. As such, critics have said that this totalitarian policy is a political need of the authorities, not a need for the epidemic prevention itself, let alone for the benefit of the Chinese people. The Communist Party's anti-pandemic effort looks more like a full-force military operation, with heavy military involvement and armored vehicles to create an orderly state in Shanghai. This cosmopolitan city is actually far from being calm and peaceful. Public unrest is taking place right now for defending their basic rights and freedom. As the saying goes, you can cut all the flowers, but you cannot keep spring from coming. Socrates said, most people, including ourselves, live in a world of relative ignorance. We are even comfortable with that ignorance because it's all we know. When we first start facing the truth, the process may be frightening, and many people run back to their old lives. But if you continue to seek truth, you will eventually be able to handle it better. In fact, you want more. Once you have tasted truth, you won't ever want to go back to being ignorant. The party state is steadily declining and losing out on its own game. It's perhaps no accident that SARS and this coronavirus all started in China. These days, people in China and around the world are waking up to the reality of what this communist regime is up to. Over the decades, this regime has accumulated a lot of bad karma from persecuting innocent people like intellectuals, Christians, Falun Gong practitioners, and ethnic minorities. As Elvis Presley reminded us, when things go wrong, don't go with them. With that, let's try some strong black tea today. Until next time, peace and tea be with you.